If you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing and becoming a member today. Authors and artists work really hard on their stuff, so please support them using the links below. Shout out to new Patreon supporter Biggie B. Thanks for being part of the Mondo Crew. Sponsored by Miles Kirby. Realizing our heroes lie on the horizon, Bobbity panically wonders what they're doing here, shouting for his Majin to go and stop him. On the lookout, Dende makes note of their contact. Mr. Satan pointing forward for he and Boo to take a look, but the Bubble Man has no desire to, telling his friend if he wants to go, he can go it alone. But of course, Hercule can't fly, so he has no means of making it by himself. So as always, Earth's champ is able to bribe his companion with a chocolate bar. Nomming it down quickly, they head towards the action. Once again commanding Noob to do away with the Z-Fighters. Have you forgotten everything? It's me, Goku! I'm your teacher! You're not a Majin! Come back to your senses! These words seem to have some effect on Oob. As everything stands still, Goku continues to try and break through to the boy, reminding him of who he is and where he comes from. But Bobbity isn't going to let his pet slip away so easily. Ba -ba -ba! Ba -ba -ba! Hit my margin. While the fight resumes, Gohan takes note of Babidi's influence on the kid. While Goku keeps Oob busy, there's no one to defend the wizard. As Gohan makes his descent on the villain, Shin and Piccolo peer in, believing this should do it. Until the Jaitai Force makes an untimely arrival. This time, bearing Pan who screams out for her father, but he can do nothing at the moment. Goku also taking a second to recognize their presence. As her cries only worsen, Gohan can no longer contain himself, demanding they let her go. You want to save her? Then give us the Dragon Ball. Bulking at the offer, he turns to his father, inquiring what they should do. Thinking intensely, it's not long before the others turn to him as well, Goten even echoing his brother's question. As not far away, Boo and Satan make their way to the battle. Though wanting to keep a low profile, the pair land a good distance away. In the air, the brute shouts they should just hand the ball over and be done with it, knowing they could crush her in a moment's notice. Between Pan shouting and the villain's sinister laugh, this doesn't do much to quell Mr. Satan's concerns, only hearing they want to exchange her for something. Or would you rather sacrifice your own family? Finally, getting a glimpse of what's going on in Goku's head, he knows that if they hand the ball over, it could spell doom for the entire universe. But he can't just let his granddaughter die, wondering how he's going to explain this to Chi Chi and Videl. Hurry up! Cough up the ball already! The, the Dragon Ball? Because this stupid thing, my granddaughter is! Demanding once more, our heroes stop hesitating. The clock is ticking! Or will she be crushed? With tears in his eyes, Gohan cries out for his daughter again. His previous silence now understood. It would seem Shen had already assumed the girl's fate. Piccolo and Goten continue to look on in horror. Also beginning to show emotion, Goku has decided the universe is more important than Pan. Believing there must be another way to save her. Pan! Don't, don't you, don't you hurt her! Looking over at Hercule, he seems to have caught everyone by surprise. Then give us the Dragon Ball! Stuttering he has it, Mr. Satan goes to retrieve the final Dragon Ball from his gi, raising it to the sky, bellowing, here it is, now let her go! Again, stunning everyone with an earshot, looking in the direction of Earth's hero. Goku barks for Satan not to hand over that ball. Then Pan will! Huh? Don't you- <laughs> Taking it by force from the less than mighty champ, the Jaitais now hold all the cards leaving the gang to wonder what they're going to do now. Ha <laughs> ha, we got it! Excellent, finally! However, huh? Given the emotional, stressful circumstances of the situation, Pan has unlocked the Super Saiyan form, screaming at the villainous brute that she will kill him. Her father and uncle cheer her on, instead of getting involved for some reason, while the other Jaitai stare on blindly in anger. 
raising her hand promising to shatter her foe into pieces. Goku swells with pride how much her ki has evolved, wondering if this is the first time she's gone Super Saiyan. How could she be this powerful? How? She's just a kid! While everything comes to a settle, Gohan calls after his child, exclaiming what a great job she did, rushing towards one another, attempting to finally reunite. The brood is dirtied up, but far from finished. Out of eye shot, he dashes after her, Gohan shouting for her to look out. Die! Catching her, she has fallen from her Super Saiyan state. Goku runs over to hand Gohan a senzu letting his emotions take control. The half Saiyan can't believe someone would do this to a child. Roaring, he's going to kill them all. Come on, you're nothing but trash. Yaji, we've got the Dragon Ball, don't bother. On the ground, Goku knows they still have to return to the Zero Universe in order to summon Shenron. So it's now or never to stop him, calling for the others to charge all at once. Do you really think you can stop the Jaitai Force? Unable to land a blow, Goku knows the agility of his opponent and wonders why he's keeping his arms behind his back. Reciprocating the thoughts of his adversary's speed, the villain believes he may actually have to use his hands if this drags on. With Goku taking a few hits, Gohan rushes to his aid, but is stopped along the way. Vegeta stepping up to challenge the Stonewall Yaji. Okay, I'll give you a taste of my power! While the strongest of our warriors entertain the Jaitais, Shin leads the others to go for Babidi. It's only after all this drama Mr. Satan has realized how important the Dragon Balls are. Apparently, he's unaware of their power in this story. Hold it! Majin! Stop him! Haha! <laughs> yes! But approaching his old foe, Shin plans to wipe that smile right off his face. Huh? Ah! This is the end for you! Majin, help me! Supreme Kai, look out! No! Kaioshin-sama! With Shin taking the brunt of Oob's blast, the others are powerless to assist. Even those on the lookout feel his key fading. Well done, Majin! He's still alive! Quickly coming up with a plan to save him, Piccolo knows it's too risky for him to remain here. Sully, give Shindy the ball so he can return it to the Zeroverse! And with the ball in hand, Shindy announces to his lord they have recovered the last piece to their puzzle, as the portal opens for him to enter. As this happens, the gang realizes what's going on. Mr. Satan again states his confusion, not understanding what all this fuss is about that crystal ball. Then Piccolo utters a detail that would have been very useful to know. Hmm. <laughs> Even if they do, they'll be unable to summon the dragon unless they reside in our realm. Shenron will not materialize in the so-called Zero Universe. With this news, Goku springs into action, the plan being to guard the entrance back to their own universe. Piccolo resolving to take Shen to the lookout, wishing the others the best as he takes off. Now there is only one thing left to do, prevent Shenron from even appearing. But with the power of the Jaitai Force, it's easier said than done. Barking at his foes that the Dragon Balls are the key of retaining peace in this universe. What? The Dragon Balls are key to peace in our universe? That's when Goten informs the champ of how much worse he made the situation by giving it up. Alerting King Kai to the bad news, a wave of panic sets in for the non-warriors. Meanwhile, Shindi returns to his master. It's quite obvious they have no intention of putting any delay to their plans. What? what? No mercy? I'll flatten you! While Vegeta does what Vegeta does, Goku worries he's being too reckless, expending too much energy before the other villains return with the Dragon Balls. Trunks echoing these concerns. As Kaiosama and company feel two gigantic keys colliding, Piccolo knows it could only be Vegeta. They're fighting to prevent Shenron from appearing. Sadly, I'm just too powerless to help. 
Even Vegeta begins to take his lumps in this battle. The others believing it's only a matter of time before he falls, if something doesn't change. Trunks unable to grasp that even his father, at his greatest heights, still can't even match this foe. Boo, Satan, and Pan look on as well, equally powerless. Though Mr. Satan, Earth's greatest champion, savior of the world, can't just sit idly by, looking around frantically to find a way to turn the tides. Getting a glimpse of the entrance to the Zero Universe, he realizes that's it. When everyone is distracted, he'll make a run for it, traveling to the Zero Universe himself to get the Dragon Balls back. But given the power of these enemies, will they let their guard down long enough for Earth's hero to sneak through?